Tonight, I wish to address the recently filed indictment in the Southern District of New York. On Tuesday, November 26, 2024, I was traveling with my family in Florida when I received a call from ASP Foster Rule, captain of the Royal Bahamas Police Force aircraft. He informed me that Chief Superintendent Elvis Curtis had been arrested overnight and was scheduled to be arraigned in the federal court at 1 p.m. Immediately, I contacted Superintendent Harris Cash, our liaison officer attached to Bahamas Consulate General Office in Miami. At that time, he was unaware of the arrest, but confirmed shortly after checking that Chief Superintendent Curtis was indeed in custody and facing the following charges. Conspiracy to import cocaine, possession and use of firearms, firearm conspiracy. Later that day, I met with Superintendent Cash and Ms. Curtis, the wife of Chief Superintendent Curtis at the courthouse where the arraignment took place. Due to federal procedures, I could not speak with Chief Superintendent Curtis. After the arraignment concluded, I immediately updated the Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security to ensure that they were fully informed of this grave development. This moment was not just shocking, it was devastating. It cut to the core of the trust that the Royal Bahamas Police Force is meant to represent. The indictment outlines allegations against Chief Superintendent Elvis Curtis that raise serious questions about activities that allegedly began in May 2021. The indictment further mentions Donald Frederick Ferguson II, who was previously questioned as a person of interest in the killing of Giovanni Rule. His connection in this case alongside Chief Superintendent Curtis raises new questions that we are actively pursuing as part of our expanded investigation. For now, we only know what is outlined in the indictment. To ensure a comprehensive understanding of how these activities began and then remain undetected, I have already initiated consultation with key individuals who held leadership roles during that period. I have already spoken with former Commissioner of Police, Paul Rule, who served from March 30th, 2020 to July 5th, 2022. Additionally, I intend to contact former Commissioner Anthony Ferguson, who served from October 30th, 2017 to March 29th, 2021. In addition to former leaders outside of the force, I intend to reach out to former Prime Minister Hubert Minnis and former Minister of National Security Marvin Deems, who were in office from 2017 to 2021. During the period in which the alleged crimes are said to have begun, these discussions aim to determine whether any concerns or intelligence about these activities were raised during their tenures, and if so, how they were addressed. I want to assure the Bohemian people that we will, of course, cooperate fully with the U.S. Department of Justice. And to date, we have not received a request to arrest the other individuals in the indictment. Also, we have not been given the names of any additional police or government officials who may be under suspicion. And as far as I know, no one else in country has been given the names of any individual or individuals referenced to the indictment. Speculation as to who those individuals might be can be extremely damaging to the reputation of innocent people. At the moment, nobody knows. We therefore discourage people from calling any names from the current and previous administration. It is pure speculation. I also advise the public that the DOJ defines a government official as any individual 
currently working for the government from a member of clerical staff to a senior politician. I additionally want to update the public on the investigation into Chief Superintendent Michael Johnson. As previously mentioned in interviews, we are committed to concluding this matter in a few weeks before the end of the year. That commitment remains firm. Only a thorough and transparent response by the force to the findings of the investigation can advance the crucial objectives of restoring the trust of the Bahamian people in helping to understand how we have arrived at this point. There is some context that Bahamians may find useful. Some context that Bahamians may find useful as follows. In 2019, the political directive decided to reduce the size of the force, senior leadership, and transferred a number of experienced officers outside of the organization. I was assigned to Ministry of Health in July 2022. I was appointed Commissioner of Police. Since that time, I have worked extremely closely with local and international partners, especially U.S. agencies. That partnership has resulted in many successful operations. For decades, the Bahamas has relied heavily on the U.S. government for intelligence to drive operations involving weapons and drug trafficking. Even the vast resources required to address activities involving multinational criminal organization. In our communities, we are making important progress in several categories of crime, but we are well aware that there is still a lot of work to be done. A nuclear hole and build initiative has launched recently and is still underway. Even at this early stage, it is showing strong signs of success. It is critical to understand that as police officers, we can only act on evidence and intelligence. At no time during my tenure did any of our international partners raise concerns about the activities outlined in the U.S. indictment. I have reviewed my meetings with agencies such as the FBI, U.S. Homeland Security, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agencies, and the U.S. Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement, as well as with the U.S. Charge Affairs. As recently as October 2024, none of these interactions highlighted suspicion about individuals or activities now under investigation. The crimes alleged in the indictment are extremely serious and require serious change and reform in response. Many police and security forces around the world have found themselves addressing very serious allegations or crimes in their own ranks. We have already started to benefit and learn from their experience. Our neighbors in the Caribbean and North America have also been challenged with similar breaches within senior ranks of law enforcement agencies. This culture of corruption that's infiltrated the Royal Bahamas Police Force did not happen overnight, but from today, we will redouble our efforts to stamp it out. Dealing with police wrongdoing is complex and will require both a new legislative framework and operational changes. As commissioner, I believe these are crucial steps needed to restore this institution integrity and to rebuild the trust with the public that is so essential. I fully support the government's proposal for independent civilian oversight of the police force. Experience has shown that such oversight, which includes members of the public, has a strong deterrent effect on improper policing behavior. The public must know that someone is watching, not just from within, but also from the outside. Independent oversight means that no one, no one can hide behind the badge. 
Tonight, I am presenting the framework to rebuild the Royal Bahamas Police Force that targets the failures and breaches in trust that have brought us to this point. This plan is rooted in accountability, action, and transparency. It is bold because it must be. And I am asking for the support of the Bahamian people, the government, law enforcement, and all stakeholders to see it through. The first step is to create safe way for people to report corruption. I therefore propose the immediate implementation of an encrypted anonymous whistleblower platform. This will strengthen the existing protection we have for whistleblowers. It will allow officers and citizens to report wrongdoing without fear or retaliation. Corruption strives in silence and this platform will end that silence. In addition, I will formally request sig significant increase funding from the Ministry of National Security to expand anti-corruption investigations with additional resources. We can become more self-reliant in our intelligence, evidence gathering capability. This introduction of body cams has helped ensure that every police interaction is recorded and accountable. To expand that accountability, I propose we accelerate the transition from paper-based system to a fully digital platform. This platform will track every action the force takes, creating a tamper-proof record that ensures transparency and eliminates manipulation. I am also proposing mandatory annual integrity testing for all senior officers and mandatory financial disclosure for ranks at chief superintendent and above. Any individual who has departmental responsibility should be subject to unexplained wealth orders. The public deserves to know that those at the top of this organization is beyond reproach. We recruit our officers from members of the public, and so our recruitment process must also change. In the past, several incidents of character reference provided by members of the public were simply untrue. Moving forward, I propose to publish the names of shortlist recruits in the newspaper for public feedback during the 30-day review period. This will allow citizens to raise concerns confidentially about any individual's character or past behavior. We want to know if someone in your community is unfit to wear this uniform. Every credible concern will be investigated. Recruits will also face enhanced screenings to ensure only individuals of the highest integrity join this force. For longer serving members, I am proposing that force undergo mandatory annual ethics training. Every officer from the most junior to the most senior will be reminded that serving the Bohemian people with integrity is not optional. It's the bare minimum. Finally, we will create independent oversight channels where external bodies can review, misconduct, reports to ensure transparency. No report will be sweep under the rug. If you are part of the problem, you will be found and dealt with. If you are not prepared to meet the standards the Bohemian people expect, this is not the force for you. Unfortunately, corruption in our country goes beyond law enforcement. According to a recent IDB report. Nearly three quarters of Bahamian firms admitted to paying bribes to obtain permits or access based public services. This report is a damning indictment, not just of the system we allowed to fester, but of the culture we are led grew in our country. I am asking you now, if you've ever been asked to pay a bribe, 
come forward, no matter how big or small. We need to know whether it was for a permit, a favor, or to make something faster. The sooner people start speaking up, the sooner we can start breaking the cycle. The IDB report confirms what we already know. Corruption became normalized in too many corners of our society. It will take all of us working together to change it. This breach is about creating a system in which honesty has a chance to flourish and wrongdoing has no place to hide. A fairer, more just society benefits everyone. To the many courageous and honest officers who serve with integrity, I know this moment is challenging for you. I know you feel portrayed by your colleagues and scrutinized by the public. Let me tell you this, you are the backbone of this force. You are the reason we still have hope and I will fight for you. We understand the seriousness of the moment and the wake to recover trust. We must do with all of our determination. The Bahamian people expect more and deserves better. These problems must not come to define this Royal Bahamas Police Force. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is one of our country's oldest institution, spanning more than 184 years. We have had great storms before. We will emerge from this one better and stronger. And when the going gets tough, we do not cut and run. We do not turn our back on the problem or simply push it aside onto other shoulders. This moment requires strong, decisive leadership. I will continue to uphold my oath and perform my duty with integrity, loyalty, and courage. Good night and God bless you, Bahamas.